Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Lightcap. I'm here today to talk to you about the moral law of God as stated in the Ten Commandments. But before we talk about that, I wanted to show you, this is a game that our daughter Lauren just purchased, Catan. Our family played it this weekend, it was fun. But we're a family of five, so what do you think would happen if each one of us came up with our own rules and directions for how to play the game? Do you think we would have any problems at the end agreeing upon who won the game? Um, Catan actually comes with a pretty lengthy um, game rules booklet and we had to refer to it quite a few times during the evening to see what the rules were and to make sure that we were playing properly. Aren't you glad that God gave us his instruction guide, the Bible, to teach us how to live, that we don't have to try to guess or figure it out on our own. He gave us his love letter to us here. And he tells us to hide his word in our hearts so that we don't sin against him. So our question today, are you ready? Our question is, what is the law of God stated in the 10 Commandments? And our answer is, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. And you shall not covet. Now God spoke the law directly to Moses to give to the people of Israel because he loved them and he wanted them to live safely and successfully. God's law was intended to bless his people and not be a burden to them. Now, some people might think that laws are harsh and they restrict us from having fun, but God's laws are meant to be for our own good. So let's have an example. Let's say that one of, our, one of my kids came to me and said, Mom, can I eat that whole carton of vanilla ice cream? I would say, no, you can have a bowl of ice cream, but I'm not just trying to be mean. I know that my child will be the whole rest of the night sick to their stomach because they ate that whole carton of ice cream. So I would say no, because I know that's what's best for them in that situation. All right, back to the 10 commandments. They were given in love. They reflect God's character. And the Ten Commandments are God's moral law, meaning that they show us what's right and wrong from God's perspective. Um, the wonderful news is we don't have to guess what God thinks is right and wrong. He reveals himself in Scripture, and he shows us what he values, what he loves, and what he dislikes. Now, this is a very, very important part um, that I want to make sure that you understand. We, you, can never be good enough to earn God's love. God does not expect us to be perfect. He calls us to be faithful. And even when we mess up and make mistakes, which we're going to, um, God still loves us. He never stops loving us. And when we're sorry, when we make a mistake and mess up, and we ask God to forgive us, He does forgive us. And he helps us live our lives um, in ways that are pleasing to him. I never thought about this as a kid, but the Ten Commandments really show us our need for Jesus because we can't be perfect. In Genesis, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and God spoke us into existence. Pastor Joel talked about that today in church. I say this to say that God should be the ultimate authority in our lives because he has the right to be. He created us, he created all things, and he has the right to decide the rules for living because he is creator God. Um, to close, in today's world, there's a lot of importance and emphasis on the outward appearance, what you see on the outside of a person. Scripture, the Bible says in 1 Samuel 16, the Lord does not look at the things that people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Now, I wanted to show you, when I was a kid, we used to have children time, sermon time in church. 
And it's funny, all these years later, I still think sometimes about those sermons. Um, our pastor showed us two mugs. There was one that was really pretty, really shiny, and there was one that was all beat up and had definitely seen better days. And he asked us if we had to pick which mug would we pick. And of course, I picked the prettier, shiny mug. But then he came and showed us the inside. Ugh, look at that. I wouldn't want to put my drink in there and then have to drink it. But the point of that lesson was you can't judge a book by the cover. You can't tell by looking at the outside. And people put value on the outsides sometimes. God looks at the heart. He looks at the inside. And our hearts matter to God. Head knowledge is very important. Um, so that we don't get tricked. Some people have different opinions um, than God has revealed to us in Scripture, so we need to know what God's Word says so we don't get tricked. We need to know what God's Word says so we know how best to make decisions and how, what are, what's the best decisions to live our lives, knowing that we, we can't earn God's love, God's approval, but we want to, out of thankfulness and gratefulness for what he's done for us. Um, our hearts should really, really, really love Jesus because of what he's done for us. So remember the importance of reading God's word. Physical exercise is important, but we have to feed ourselves spiritually. It doesn't just get into our heads by carrying our Bibles around or looking at our Bibles. Um, God's Word is important. Let's hide it in our hearts. And let's grow more and more in love with Jesus every day. Boys and girls, will you pray with me? Dear God, I thank you so much for your great love for us. Thank you that you took the time to give us the law to help us try to live our lives uh, making good decisions along the way. Thank you for Jesus, that Jesus took care of our sin debt on the cross and that we don't have to be perfect. He is. And I just thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. Help us to care about our hearts. Help us to strive to look more and more like Jesus so that we can share your love with others. Um, we lift all this up and ask in Jesus' beautiful, beautiful and precious name we pray. Amen.